Hello and um, welcome to uh, this video where I go over this uh, this poll that I have created here and uh, yes, uh, it's not really a poll actually. It's um, a Google Forms um, questionnaire, I guess. Um, cartoon community questions. Um, so I created this uh, Google Forms today. Actually, I actually kind of got the idea to do it last night after I watched uh, Twisted Dan's video where. He responded to some of his comments about uh, various cartoon community topics. Um, he he responded to my comment about like the whole thing about reboots and should we put you know words into creators' mouths, especially Steven Hillenburgs after he died, and would he be okay with Camp Coral, etc. And it kind of got me thinking about all these kind of where people kind of land uh, in terms of like creativity versus business, or you know com complicitness versus uh, complicitness about um you know reboots. You know, changes being made, re reboots versus them, you know, staying like the same as they would be, uh, compared to the original. Um, I thought of maybe doing one of those, like, political compass tests, but, you know, I, I don't really know how to do that. Well, I'm sure I could. I, I, I'm studying computer programming, so I probably could create a website like that, but, um, it kind of seems a little bit too much right now, so I thought in the meantime I'd do this. Um, so, I'm not gonna actually be voting on my own, uh, poll, or Google Forms thing here. Um, however, I wanted to, uh, go over what my answers would be for this. I've already, I've gotten 14 responses so far, and that will probably be, uh, more by the time you're watching this on YouTube. But I kind of wanted to just go over how I feel about all these specific topics, about, you know, reboots and creativity versus business. Um, a lot of people in the cartoon community tend to be very, uh, pro-creativity versus business. A lot of them are, uh believe that like never should be a lot more altruistic, should be doing things for more creativity than money, etc. like that. Um, now I actually don't fully agree with that. I, t um, I tend to be a little more, I guess, accepting of, uh, certain business decisions being made. Um, I, 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 I'm not a cap, I'm, I'm not for, for, for sure saying I'm a capitalist. I'm not actually sure if I'm a capitalist or socialist yet, but I tend to be a little more, I guess, complicit to things like these, and I'll kind of explain, explain my reasons as I, uh, answer these questions. So, um, without further ado, let me, um, kind of go over why, um, I believe what I do for each question. And this is actually, um, the editing portion. Um, I'm, I'm not actually, again, I'm not actually voting on this poll myself, so, uh, I could do that in, in a different browser where I wasn't logged in, but, um, I, I don't want to actually show any, show, like, you guys my, the actual, the pie charts, the responses over here. I, I posted one picture on Twitter, but, um, I, I don't want to, anyone who's watching this video, I don't want to, I guess, uh, sway them into, like, voting the same way as everyone else did, like, because you can give into peer pressure if you know what everyone else is voting, so. Alright, so, um, first things first. On creativity. This is the first section. There's, uh, nine sections, uh, eight questions each. I actually consider, I, after I posted, I thought of doing a, a ten section of, a uh, you know, on the cartoon community, is the cartoon community toxic or not? And kind of questions related to the cartoon community specifically, but it was too late by then. I didn't want to add it in because, I mean, a bunch of people had already taken it. I didn't want them to have to take it again. All right, so first question here. There is no such thing as too much creative freedom. I kind of got a kind of a mix of responses on this one about, you know, some people agreed, some people disagreed. Um, I disagree. I believe there is such a thing as too much creative freedom. Um, and this kind of ties into the next question, actually. An incredibly dark, tasteless, or offensive joke, such as the cutting joke in Family Guy's Brian's a Bad Father, is simply an exercise of creative freedom. I'm sure all of you who are in the cartoon community know about the joke of Brian's a Bad Father, where, 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 where uh, Peter walks up to Lois with a knife and says, Hey, Lois, if I want to kill myself, should I cut my wrist this way or this way? And the mix uh, says, Sideways for attention, long way for results. I, I actually talked about that with uh, Joseph Buckley on his live stream, actually, about, um, about the idea of, you know, people getting offended by dark jokes, and, um, I agree. I believe this is an exercise of creative freedom. And going back to, uh, question one here, I believe that there can be such a thing as too much creative freedom if the creators are literally allowed to do absolutely anything. I mean, there are some things that are forbidden for good reasons. I mean, child pornography is obviously not allowed anywhere. So, you could say that a child pornography movie is creative freedom. But I think most people would not be okay with that. Same with something that advocated pedophilia or murder or something like that. So I believe there is such a thing as too much creative freedom. And 
dark jokes um, do, in fact, exercise creative freedom. So I disagree with too much creative freedom. I agree that dark jokes do fall under it, even if people are offended by them. Creators should own the rights to their own shows, not the networks or streaming services they air on. Okay, now, just about everybody voted agree on this one, and I also agree. I'm going to vote agree for this one, too. Um, so, I mean, networks do own the rights. Well, when you pitch a show to a network, it, it is pretty much theirs forever. Um, it's very rare that a creator does actually own their own show, with a few exceptions. Um, I remember on Nick at 40 Part uh, Part 3, uh, Greg or Paparina mentioned that uh, Nickelodeon doesn't own the rights to the secret world of Alex Mack anymore. Thomas Lynch's company does. So, that's an example of uh, a creator actually owning the right to their own show, but it's very rare that happens. But I think where most people kind of kind of want it is they think that the network should only own the distribution rights, but the creator should be, be allowed to do anything else they want with it. You know, they should be able to, uh, you know, create new seasons or a reboot or, or make new things of the, pro of the franchise rather than having to get permission from, the network, permission from the network to do that. But that's not how the animation industry works. I don't ever see that changing, by the way. I don't think that's ever going to change, but, you know, I, I do agree with that. That's why I, vote, I would say agree. A show going on for many seasons and with a changing writing staff should be made the way the new writers want it to be made and not the way it always was. Now, this is an inter interesting one. Um, um, Nick Tendo said in his video about what caused the fall of SpongeBob SquarePants about how the writers uh, in like the later seasons of SpongeBob after like after season, like after during season six and whatnot, after Steven Hillenburg became an executive producer, about how they um, kind of uh, wrote the show the way they wanted to write it instead of, uh, you know, the way it always was. Because... Um, if you can do it, why not? So, I mean, that is technically creative freedom. I mean, people people in the cartoon community, uh, they want creative freedom up until the point where, you know, it ruins something that they actually like. Uh, there's a bit of hypocrisy in that, but as for me, um, I think that they should try to stick to the original. So I would, I would say I disagree on this one. A middling animated film is worse than a terrible animated film because the former will be accepted as a norm and stagnate creativity within the animation. Within animation. Okay, so I've seen this a lot. Like people who who, who hate Illumination, people say that Illumination films are like are like are like too like like bland or they play it safe way too often, and that's actually a bad thing because that's gonna make people think that it's okay to not be creative with the animation medium, and that's gonna stagnate animation, which I think is ridiculous. Um, I do not agree with that. I would disagree here. I think people who say that Illumination is, like, holding back creative freedom are just overreacting. <laughs> Creativity should always be the forefront of a network's focus, not profit. I mean, networks are businesses. So, I mean, the, the point is to make money, and, like, and, and they can't be charitable all the time. I think that networks should be decently, should allow a decent amount of creative freedom. But I think if you focus too much on creativity, I think pro I think profit can go down. That can actually hurt them in the long run, or the short run. So should it be the forefront though? I think I'm mixed on that one. I would probably vote unsure slash mixed. It should be a creator's choice to end their own show, not the networks. Yes, I agree with that. Especially if it goes on to seasonal rot, like Spongebob or Family Guy, etc. A creator's wishes should always be respected and obeyed. I mean, this is kind of what comes up with the whole thing about Steven Hilleberg and Camp Coral. And, you know, putting aside uh, whether the whole rumor of whether or not he really would have been against it or, or not. I, th I do think that they should, the network should uh, try to respect their wishes somewhat. I mean, I think there it can be a limit where sometimes their wishes can be a little bit, uh, I guess, too strict. And I think that's just as bad as, you know, uh, uh, an executive being too strict. I think that's an, that is a parallel there. But in general, I'm not going to strongly agree, but I would say agree with that one. All right, section three on business. I am cynical when it comes to statements that networks make. That's what Twisted Dan said, said in his video. He said that uh, even if, like, a creator came forward and said they're okay with a bad reboot, he would just assume they're lying. Um, I mean, I try to give them benefit of the doubt, so... I would disagree with that. Merging with and acquiring smaller companies is good business. It's simply capitalism. 
I mean, this comes down to whether or not you're a capitalist or a socialist. Ah, well, and this might affect how you vote in 2020, if you're old enough to vote, but... Honestly, since I don't even know where I stand with capitalism or socialism, I I don't feel informed enough to even answer this. I'm sure someone else did, so I'm unsure slash mixed. There are too few animation studios. I'm not totally sure how I feel about this one either. Um, I put this question in because I figured people would have strong opinions either way. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it is kind of a small industry, but... I mean, I don't know. Do we need more? I mean, when you compare it like, to all like the like the film companies, like like DreamWorks, Pixar, Disney, Blue Sky, Illumination, etc. 20th Century Fox, which is now owned by Disney. Or like the, on TV, you know, you got like, you know, Fox, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney Channel, PBS, Discovery Kids, maybe, or The Hub. Or, is The Hub still a thing anymore? I don't know. I think that's a decent amount. I, I I think I'd say disagree with that, actually. Focus group testing can be a positive. Agree. I think that even though people in the cartoon community tend to be very pro-creativity, uh, pro I think having the business side is good. And maybe not all, maybe we don't have to always listen to focus groups, but I think that we, I think it can be a positive. Network executives should always have a final say on creative decisions. This could be like a like a like a thirty minute long video. I'm not, I'm not even like a third way way through of this thing. Mm. I mean, to the point where it like is going against um the um to the point where it's going against um like standards and practices. And that's the next question, by the way. If it's a, like a petty reason, I would say no. Like if they think like. It should. It, they they don't want it because it has a female lean and they're sexist, kind of like Seema was for re rejecting the modifiers. I think I'm unsure of such mixed on that one too. Network standards, rules, and regulations exist for a reason. I strongly agree. Yes, they do. I mean, there's a reason why you know child pornography is not something that anyone can do. So there are there should be limits on creative freedom, definitely, and. That's one of them. Network standards, rules, and regulations are too strict. A lot of people wouldn't agree for this one. Honestly, I think nowadays, especially in the 2010s, I think we've pushed a lot of like what we're getting away with on TV and movies now. I think I'd actually disagree on this one. Creatives should do their research before deciding which network or streaming service to pitch their ideas to. Strongly agree. Um, I actually own Joe Murray's book about, you know, I'm actually looking at it right now, uh, Creating animated cartoons with character, and he actually mentioned that in in the book about how you should um do your research and make sure you're pitching your show to the right network because you know Cartoon Network could be appealing to little girls tomorrow and Nickelodeon could be appealing to boys, but it could be the reverse the next day. So yes, strongly agree with that one. On animation slash stories, I I combined these two because I couldn't come up with eight things for both. There are too few two D animated films in theaters. Okay, this is a controversial one, and I have gotten very few people agreeing with me on this one, but I disagree. Um, I do not believe we need more 2D animated films in theaters. I'm not saying that I am against 2D animated films in theaters ever happening. However, I think that people think that like it's leading to the the uh, obliteration or the end of of 2D animation when you know most. Cartoons on TV from Nickelodeon and CN and Disney, most of them are 2D. So 2D still exists. I mean, in fact, CG is n almost non-existent on on TV. So, and why are people not saying that we need more stop-motion films on, on in theaters? So, yeah, this comes. It, it, I I disagree that we need more 2D animated films in theaters. So. Yeah, I know that, like, I've gotten very little agreement on that, but that's just honestly how I feel. Animation should always push the limits of the medium and be as creative as possible. Again, I think it is okay to have an occasional film that is just, you know, fun and doesn't have to do anything new with the medium, can just be kind of a fun movie. Like, again, I think Illumination is really overhated. But in general, yes, I do think animation should, you know, strive to be better. 
and we should be better than what came before, but I don't think every film has to push that medium. Agree, not strongly agree. TV or film animation should have a higher animation quality than internet animation created by an amateur. I mean, strongly agree. Of course it should. Poor quality animation is, is an instant turnoff for me when it comes to checking out new shows. I mean, there's a lot of shows that would be a lot less hated if their animation wasn't so bad, like like Angel Anaconda, or The Mathis School Bus Rides Again, or The Adventures of Kid Danger. I mean, those shows have problems beyond their animation, but... And, I mean, the characters in Big Mouth just look ugly. Besides the whole puberty thing, I'm not... I'm never gonna watch Big Mouth. I'm boycotting Big Mouth completely. But, I mean, in general, I would say agree. Although there can't... There can be good shows that have bad animation. There should be a multitude of different art and animation styles across a single period of time. Not too many similar looking shows. I mean, I'm trying I'm trying not to, not to use a, the Cal Art style argument, but... I mean, agree. That's why I kind of prefer Nickelodeon over Cartoon Network. At least, and that's one of the reasons why. You know, aside from shows that are made by like the same creator, same company, like Klasky Chupo shows or Butch Hartman shows, a lot of Nickelodeon shows do kind of have different art styles. You know, I, I would prefer a lot of shows to look different from each other rather than using the same style. The Bean Mouth style, that's a, another way of saying the Callard style. There should be a roughly equal amount of serialized and episodic cartoons at any given time. Now, this is a debate I've kind of seen brought up kind of recently about... Uh, pardon me. Uh, this is a debate I've seen kind of brought, brought up a lot recently about how, I guess, serialized shows are kind of overshadowing episodic shows and... We need to bring more episodic shows back. I mean, I do think... Honestly, yes, I do think there should be kind of a mix. I don't think it should just, just fully be one or the other. I mean, there are both serialized and episodic shows I like. So... I might even say strongly agree. Yeah, strongly agree. Animation is a poor medium of choice when it comes to discussing or satirizing current events. Now... This is kind of why Mr. Enter put uh, our cartoon president on his top 10 worst cartoons of the, the 2010s list. You know, because animation takes time. Um, you know, but, you know, it takes months to animate, but unless you like South Park, like, it takes months to animate, and, like, internet memes and current events can change very quickly. So, I think that's, that's better for live action, so strongly agree. Writers should be allowed to solicit ideas from fans. If you follow Vincent Waller's Twitter, he actually says in his Twitter bio that he can't get idea, he can't take idea, re episode request ideas from fans, and I agree with that. Uh, sorry, I disagree. I disagree. I mean, I agree with that, so I disagree with that they should be allowed to solicit ideas from fans. Because I mean, I don't think it's right to just let some 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 kid on on Twitter like tell you what your next episode should be about. On critiquing, I always approach new shows with an open mind. I try to. I'd say agree. It's for kids is never a valid argument. I disagree. I think it's for kids. I, I know a lot of people really hate the it's for kids argument, but I think it's for kids can actually be a valid argument depending on the way you use it. I mean, if if you're 30 years old and you're watching Barney the Dinosaur, and you're wondering why you hate it so much. It's probably because you're not the target demographic anymore. It's why kids like Dora the Explorer, but you hate it when you're an adult. It's like, you obviously know where the thing Dora's pointing at is. It's like, or what she's saying. It's like, I mean, it's tedious when you're an adult, but it's fun when you're a kid, because kids have not developed those skills yet. So, I think that's the case where saying it's for kids actually is valid. My throat's getting sore. I might might have a long drink of water after I, I finish recording here. Critics should not be biased by nostalgia or sympathy for poorly treated creators when they make the reviews of certain shows or movies. I think a lot of people can be victims of that, where they where they give a positive review simply because they grew up watching it. Or, in the case of Harvey Beaks, because of what happened to C.H. Greenblatt, people now feel inclined to praise Harvey Beaks simply because of that, instead of talking about you know, why Harvey Beaks is actually good on its own. Yeah, I strongly agree with that. If a show has a bad beginning, it hinders my desire to watch more of the show. Now, this was a big thing with, with with Mr. Enter and his very controversial review of Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where he admitted that he only watched a few episodes of it, and he 
and, and he called it the review of the whole show, and I mean, I understand that a bad beginning can hinder your want to watch more of the show, but I would say agree to that, but I would also ha add the caveat that you should also, you know, not call the whole show bad just because of the first, like, couple episodes. That's not fair. And this ties in the next question. The entire series needs to be watched in order to make a fair review of said series. Strongly agree with that. Absolutely. Mr. Andrews Rises of the TMNT review should have been called a first impressions video because it really was a first impressions video. Some critics take animation too seriously. Strongly agree with that. I, I think Mr. Enter does. I know he's kind of talked before about if you, th uh, he's talked before about how um, you know, if you think I'm being too harsh, show the Mad Balls gross jokes. Like this is what the whole animation studio would be, whole animation industry would be if, if I wasn't criticizing it. And that's how kind of, kind of people kind of feel about things where they feel like it was really soulless or corporate driven, like like the Emoji Movie. I think, at some extent, people are kind of overreacting to that. Judging a show or movie prematurely by its trailer is completely fair. I mean, judging the trailer is fair. Judging the whole movie and thinking... And calling the movie bad based on the trailer is not. Disagree with that. I wonder if someone misread this sentence here and they voted... Depending on their interpretation. Some shows are so bad they deserve no attention at all, not even extremely negative reviews. I mean, like I said before, I am never watching Big Mouth, so I agree with that. I'm sure someone else feels the same way about some other show they hate. Reboots. Now, this was kind of the big thing that led me to make this Google Forms when I when I heard Twisted Dan's response to my comments that I left on his video. The original creator should always be involved with or consulted for a reboot. Agree. Unless they're dead. I mean, I use the whole adapting Shakespeare argument. Would would Shakespeare be okay with all the movie adaptations of his plays, or would he be a purist? All reboots should aim to please fans of the original property. Now, this was kind of the big point that, you know, Twisted Dan's made in his video, and he was kind of responding to Mr. Enter's review of Thundercats Roar, and he agreed with what he said there. I think that there are, are times where reboots can be different from the original, but they can still be appealing to the fans. Like, if you've read uh, the original book on Coraline, uh, the, the, the 2009 stop-motion film Coraline is has quite a few differences from the um, the book to the movie, but it's still a good, it's still a really good movie. So, I think it can be different, but I think it should still please fans of the original. A reboot revival should stand out from the original and not be too similar. I think it should strike a balance between Creative, uh, uh, it, sh it should strike a balance between, you know, being faithful versus being different. And I think Coraline did that perfectly. So, yeah, I agree. If a director or developer wants to recreate an old property and do its concept right, they should just create a brand new show. Now, this is what Twisted Dan's brought up in his um, response to my comment about, you know, they should just create a brand new show if they, um, it, like, if a person wants to create a, a do a reboot of a show because they didn't like how its concept was executed and they want it to be done right, they should just, um, create a brand new show. I mean, that's what Mr. Andrew's doing with, with Growing Around. Like, I mean, Growing Around was based off a, 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 of, a, of, a, of a short there on Disney Channel, and he liked the concept, but he didn't think he did the concept right, so he created Growing Around, so... Of course, people could call it a rip-off. I think there's, I think there is that. I'm mixed on this one. Unsure slash mixed. If a creator has passed away, their show or franchise should be immune to being rebooted or re revived in any way. I mean, a lot of Hanna Barbera properties, like, I'm sure the creators of the Flintstones and Jetsons and Scooby Doo are all dead, but, you know, there's still adaptations of their stuff coming out, or, or in the Looney Tunes. Uh, should Chuck Jones roll in his grave over Wabbit, or, or, or whatever the most recent Looney Tunes adaptation is, or, or even Shakespeare? I brought Shakespeare, really, but would he be okay with Hamlet or Macbeth, like, movies? So, people kind of feel, people voted agree because of, you know, the whole Camp Coral thing, but I'm going to say disagree. It is easy to tell when a reboot is made purely for baking on nostalgia or name recognition, such as Powerpuff Girls 2016 or the, the live-action Disney remakes. Yeah, okay, almost everyone voted agree or strongly agree for this one. And, I mean, yeah, there are times where it, it kind of it kind of is obvious that, uh, like, the studio did it just to make money and there really wasn't much creativity that went into it. I still don't think it's fair to say that it was, like, completely corporate-driven. I mean, 
a lot of the time people are just kind of assuming that something was only made for money when I mean all entertainment is made for money technically. I'd say agree though. I think there are times where it's obvious, but I think people can be a little use this a little too often. Alright, I'm about halfway through now. A network or streaming service should have more currently running original properties at a given time as opposed to reboots, revivals, or spin-offs. I mean, that's what I said at the beginning of the year when I was kind of criticizing a, a Nickelodeon's 2020 upfront. Yeah, I strongly agree with that. Of course, they should have more original stuff than uh, stuff based on our existing properties. I mean, maybe like a 2 to 3 ratio? No, 2 to 1 ratio, maybe? Or 3 to 1? Somewhere around then? A reboot, revival, or spinoff should have a reason to exist beyond money or little creativity. Yeah, it should. It shouldn't just be made just because the original is popular, so we need to bring it back just to get more money. On fan backlash, now, alright, I've, I've kind of spoken about this before on Twitter and stuff, and, and Twisted Dance also made another video where he said how he supports fan backlash. Alright. When a network engages in scummy business practices, fan outrage and backlash is a duty. Sometimes it is. Unless it's like for petty reasons, and that's a later question, but... I think sometimes. I'm sure that's mixed, I'll say. Fan backlash works. Now, there is a bit of a debate about whether or not, you know, tweeting at Nickelodeon or, or Cartoon Network or whatever company actually will work. We'll actually get them to listen. I'm sure some people think it's a fruitless effort, but... Honestly, I don't think it makes much of a difference. And this kind of ties into the next question about the fans who backlash networks for scum business practices are just a vocal minority. Honestly, yes, I think that they are just a vocal minority. Like, they're man children on the internet. Like, the real audience are their kids, and the kids likely don't care about, you know, Camp Coral that's disrespecting Steven Hillenberg. So, I disagree that fan backlash works, and I agree that fans who backlash are just a vocal minority. The best thing to do when you want an effort to change is to petition them. Disagree. I'm not sure there is any way to even get them to listen. Lots of people kind of start petitioning for stupid reasons. Fan backlash can be over petty things, so just simply not airing your favorite show enough. Strongly agree, yes. I think some people can definitely play like that. Like, um, a certain guy on Twitter, I'm not going to say his name, but he was definitely... He was kind of acting like that when uh he was mad that... CN didn't mention Ed, Ed, and Eddie on Twitter on their, on Ed, and Eddie's 20th anniversary. He's acting like that was a big deal. I, I think that's a little petty. Like, who cares if they didn't mention Ed, and Eddie? Like, like, whatever. Fan backlash is entitled because you're only thinking about what you personally want to happen at the network, not what is best for the company. I think this is definitely true sometimes. I think there are, you know, fans who definitely can be entitled and just want them to give into their every demand. So, I think there, but that being said, there are times where people feel like it's their duty to do so, like with Camp Coral, and think they're calling Nickelodeon out for allegedly disrespecting Steven Hilleberg was a, was a net positive. I I, I think it's uh, circumstantial, unsure as I mixed, I'll say. Fan backlash can go too far. Strongly agree. Of course I can. I take anonymous inside sources about what goes on at a network with a grain of salt. I'm sure if any of you remember Trafon's tweet about uh, the rise of all Nickelodeon's tweet about how he got the inside sources of someone who worked at Cartoon Network and how it was like an absolute cutthroat mess, not a good situation at all, and, and that became a meme, a, a copy pasta. Yeah, you should always, you know, be skeptical about people who claim to have inside info or who got this from a. Uh, a person who worked there, because like, they, they could be lying. People could just say that to make up anything, so I strongly agree with that. Uh, like, be skeptical. Don't don't take anything at face value. On representation, I'm probably going to birth this one pretty quickly, because I'm not an LGBTQ member, so... But I'm sure some people... I kind of add this in, because I felt like people should, probably should have, um, or would have had some strong opinions on this. Diversity and representation... Diversity and representation of in TV shows and movies is important. Sorry, I'm kind of talking weird now. I'm, I've been talking for like 30 minutes now, so my voice is kind of giving out. Agree, yeah, it's important. Easy way to get praise. Sometimes it is. Unsure if that's mixed. That's consequential. That's circumstantial. Having diversity is pandering. Sometimes it is. Unsure if that's mixed. 
not every show needs to have incredibly diverse. Yeah, agree. Not every show is obligated to. Writers should consult experts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Static Cling did that. Um, they, uh, the, uh, the the writers of Static Cling, they actually had someone from Glad come in and you know make sure they got like the LGBT theme right. And, you know of of you know spoiler for those who haven't seen uh, Rockless Modern Life Static Cling, but you know Ralph Bighead becoming Rachel Bighead. Strongly agree. Yeah, if they're not of the group themselves, they should. Most cartoons, I I I don't watch enough like like LGBT cartoons. I don't watch enough like Steven Universe, etc. To really say for certain, I uh, so I'm sure that's mixed. I'm not LGBT anyway, so I wouldn't really know. Better medium to, than live action to represent it. Um, it can be, you know, if you do it through metaphors. Yeah, I think it is. Agree. No representation is better than poor representation. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it can be, it can come off as like bad if you represent them badly, and sometimes it's better not to touch the, not to even uh, like touch that at all. If you're afraid you're gonna mess it up. On bad creatives, I believe in separating art from the artist. Strongly agree. I, if you follow my Twitter feed, you would know that I am a humongous advocate for separating art from the artist. Even when it comes to someone like Chris Brown. Chris Brown's a horrible person, but he's made some a few good songs. I'm not gonna boycott Chris Brown's music for that. I believe in innocent and proven guilty. Strongly agree. Especially with Dan Schneider. I hope Dan Schneider's not guilty. I am comfortable watching a show or movie that had out of person involved in it. The Laugh House, Clarence, Ren Stimpy Show, etc. Agree. Not strongly agree, because, I mean, there is a thought in the back of my mind that this is made by a bad person, but it doesn't hinder my overall enjoyment. Removing a show from iTunes or pulling DVDs from stores due to someone who worked on it is censorship. Strongly agree. Of course it is. Uh, I mean, and, I mean, if you don't want to watch something, fine, but that's your own choice, and that's a later question. Piracy is fine if you refuse to support the network the show aired on or a person who worked on the show. Uh, I don't, I'm not a fan of piracy. I People should, you know, I mean, there are times where I do kind of watch stuff on YouTube, like like episodes of like some cartoon shows on YouTube for free. But if you can support, like, the actual person and get the money for it, I think you should. I think that's the right thing to do. But if you really don't want to support it all because you're afraid you're giving money to a bad person, I think piracy can be okay in that case. I, I don't endorse piracy, but I would say agree, but I personally wouldn't do that. But if you want to, it's fine. Refusing to watch certain networks or certain shows should be a personal choice. Strongly agree. I said that before. Of course it should. When a scandal in the animation industry breaks out, I do my research in advance to confirm the verifiability of it. Agree. I think everyone should. I mean, ever since the Me Too movement started, I feel like a lot more people are, are very, you know, always inclined to, to side with the uh, uh, accuser and just believe them no matter what. But I think that kind of opens up the floodgates for someone to lie and, like, be scummy like that. I, I think people should look things up in advance and not just take, you know, anyone who says that this person did something to me at face value. But, I mean, if they are guilty, like Harvey Weinstein is, yeah, they should definitely face the consequences. Animation creatives should not be role models. Ah, oh, that's tough. I mean, a lot of people have lost respect respect for Butch Hartman after the whole Oaxis fiasco happened and like his old critique rhymes with weak th thing uh, that, that's that's hard to say and plus you know with people like Chris Savino or John Kay anyone could be a scumbag I think some of them can be I'll say unsure such mixed Ooh, okay on to the last section there is no such thing as bad publicity um, strongly disagree. There, of course, it can be bad publicity. You know, even if you know it gets you more attention, it, it's it's bad attention. I don't see how that's uh, supposed to be positive. It's important to know the business side of the story when it comes to unpopular business decisions, such as moving shows to sister channel. Strongly agree. I can't wait to, till Pop Arena gets to like uh, the late 2000s and early 2010s on Knickknacks. Uh, I really can't wait to hear him what what he'll say about like the whole. Nicktoons death treatment, 
and like you know why SEMA even instigated that or why whoever was in charge of that time instigated that. I think there is a reason for every business decision, and you know, us viewers just don't know everything. We can only speculate. If speaking out against bad management and poor treatment could land a network employee in huge trouble, being fired, blacklisted, they should not do it. Disagree. They should, they should speak out anonymously. You know, don't reveal your identity. You know, just say what happened. You know, otherwise it's gonna, this thing is only gonna happen further, bad things in the animation industry. But be anonymous about it. And you know what? If you really do hate your job that much, then, you know, firing sh being fired shouldn't mean anything to you anyway. It is not beyond network executives to flout a lie. Almost everyone voted strongly disagree on this one. I'll say agree. I mean, yeah, they can lie. Of course they can. I mean, like, everyone lies. Politicians lie. You know, news outlets can lie. Everyone lies. Expecting good treatment of shows is not entitlement. Agree. I mean, I expect fair treatment, you know. I think it can be entitlement if you're demanding the network, like, air, like, exactly this many episodes on the schedule per week. But overall, just expecting a show to have, you know, a good slot, good airtime, and give it a fair chance, I don't think that's being entitled. I think that's being reasonable. All shows on a network deserve equal treatment regardless of how profitable or popular each one is. Yeah, this is one of the ones I'm kind of mixed on. Uh, I think they deserve equitable treatment. I think the most popular shows should still be played more. However, I think that shows that are less popular should still be played somewhat, given more of a chance. I think they deserve equitable treatment. Like, the more popular shows should be play a decent amount, but the less popular shows should still get somewhat, you know, enough, I guess enough to, I guess, balance it out. Um, if you if you guys are gonna know what equity is, like, uh, if, you, if you've seen that picture of, like, uh, like, uh, uh, like, those three guys trying to watch the baseball game, and there's, there's three boxes, you know, that's kind of how, how I kind of feel about, like, the whole, like, uh, shows in equal treatment. I believe they, they deserve equitable treatment, not equal treatment. There's a difference, and I believe equity is better than equality. So, I, I I can't say agree or disagree. I would say mix on that one. Creators can be too complicit to their network's demands. I mean, if they're just they just want to keep their jobs and they don't want to you know risk you know getting fired, I think they can be. I agree with that. I don't think they're always that's always the case, but I think many of them can be. All right, last question. I am cautious when it comes to watching shows or movies where the staff was treated poorly, such as Sausage Party. Mm, disagree. Again, I, I think separate art from the artist also applies to, you know, separate, you know, the network from their scummy business, business decisions. I should be able to watch, I, if I like a show from them, even if uh, the, the crew behind them went through hell, I'm gonna like it, you know. I guess the, there is a thought in the back of my mind about it, but it doesn't hinder my enjoyment about it, so it, it doesn't really phase me. I'm sure it bothers someone. I remember, I believe Mr. Andrew said his Camp Coral video that he, um, he was actually, uh, he was very, um, averse to checking out Sausage Party for that reason. But, I mean, there is a debate about how much you're actually supporting, you know, the actual network, or the executives that are actually treating them badly by watching it. You're always gonna have that debate. I mean, there's always that debate about how much you're actually supporting them by doing that. I, I think it's, I think it's different for each case, so... I would say disagree. I would um, I would still enjoy it for what it is. All right, that is um, that is all the uh, questions here. If any of you have not yet uh, done this form, I'll put a link to it in, in the description below. You can have a go at it yourself. Um, I'll be sure to check out your responses. Uh, all responses are saved right here. I can check them out. So um, click the link down below and try it out if you haven't already. I'm interested to hear what you think about all these questions about the cartoon community. Alright, follow me on Twitter at snorpad one and I'll see you, probably won't see you because I don't upload on YouTube very often, but see you sometime. Bye.